Bengaluru, Sadhguru, I rarely experience love within myself, and I tend to see the worst in everyone. <laughs> in, the, in the Prana series of Sadhguru Exclusive, you talk about the possibilities of moving the Anahata Chakra to become loving. Whoa. Is he married? Is this possible for me? How can I do it? Okay. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so, uh... Your, uh, your thinking First of all, you are thinking, love is a device. No, love is a consequence. Love is a consequence of being in a certain way within yourself. Love is not a device to get what you want. So all this time I was talking about uh, ooing Bhairavi, the reason why it does not work for a whole lot of people, whether it's Bhairavi, or if I don't know what's your wife's name <laughs> Why it doesn't work is, you're using love as a device, devotion as a device. It is not a device, it's a consequence of allowing a certain dimension of intelligence to function within you. When I say a certain dimension of intelligence, the logical sense of our intellect wants to dissect everything and see. When you understand that dissection is a good thing, <laughs> when it comes to physical nature, but dissection is a no good thing when it comes to other dimensions of life. When I say other dimensions of life, Immediately there are textbook science people, six… I'm ra sorry, textbook scientists who uh, immediately say, what are the dimensions, what are you talking about, you're talking superstition. Right now I'm being accused by a group in India who think they're rationalists, not… no rationale about their existence, <laughs> but they think I'm superstitious. Well, because if you try to open up any dimension, which is not within the framework of their logic, not even entire logic, not within the framework of their crude, silly little logic, they think it's superstitious. Well, uh, your existence itself is superstitious because no instrument or there is no proof that you are actually alive. Hello? No, my heart is beating, my blood is flowing. Ah, all these things can be done by machines these days. We can make your heart beat, blood flow, even neuronal activity, all these things can be stimulated in many different ways and still you may not be alive. You know the famous Chang Su story of him saying, I had a dream and very… being very worried. Why worried means, in my dream I was a butterfly and it was very real. I sat on the flower, I smelled it, I tasted it, it was all real. Now I am sitting here. Now the question is, am I Chang Su dreaming to be a butterfly or am I a butterfly dreaming to be Chang Su? because dreams are that real. Hello? So you have really no proof, are you alive? No, Sadhguru, my feet are frozen <laughs> You just have to wait till it gets to the head <laughs> I think uh, what uh, Nikola Tesla said, is very significant but unfortunately in the last century still 
most of the sci scientific community or these textbook scientists definitely have not taken to it. Nikola Tesla, who has in many ways revolutionized modern science with his study and discoveries, said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence, Nikola Tesla. So, you are thinking all phenomena has to be between cause and effect. See, if you're understanding love as a sexual response, there is a cause and effect. If you're seeing love as a dimension which is tremendously transformative within yourself, then it is not between cause and effect because it's not a transaction of any kind. So now you also picked up this little bit of jargon from where? From Sadhguru exclusive, is it? <laughs> I've been warning our teams of the dangers of the Sadhguru exclusive. <laughs> Too many things which have been spoken in very close groups, who were at a certain level of seeking, certain things were said. But now uh, everybody picks this up and it'll become like this, can I move my anahata chakra here, there and become loving? <laughs> Wheel alignment, you know. It's a six-wheel uh, six truck, <laughs> align it, love will overflow. <laughs> well, uh, you need to… you must feel love. Like how uh, right now I am feeling hunger in my stomach. Hello? <laughs> they must become pangs which cannot be satisfied by anything because it cannot be. Because the beauty of love is in its pangs. No, but where is the fulfillment? No, no, it's not a transaction to fulfill. It is just that, to burn with it. As it burns, deeper and deeper, from pain it becomes liberation, just like cremation, you know? Hello? <laughs> yes, love is a kind of cremation. It burns you up. This is why probably somebody must have experienced something to come up with the term falling in love. Falling does not suggest a transaction, hello? If you do a transaction, naturally it must be profitable to you, isn't it? Hello? Because if you do a transaction where you're going to lose, you are a dumb whatever. <laughs> because each one of you have your own terminology, I'm leaving it to you to complete the <laughs> sentence. Because we are in United States, you know. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. But you're definitely dumb. If you make a transaction and you're a loser, that is a dumb transaction. But if love is not a transaction for you, it's just a burning flame within you. Initially it hurts because it burns the skin. When it burns the core of who you are, it's a liberation. It's an absolute liberation. So this you don't do technically, I will move my, move my chakra here to here. <laughs> Maybe your liver will malfunction
Please don't get into these kind of things because you're talking beyond yourself. First of all, stop talking about this chakra business because you have not seen it. Did you see wheels moving? Hello? <laughs> Somebody has talked about it from a certain dimension of experience. You don't repeat the same words, life will cut you down because now uh, I, because lot of these kind of letters and comments keep coming to me, Sadhguru, I think my chakra, my anatha chakra is doing this, my Swadhisthana is doing this, my Vishuddhi is doing that. <laughs> what do I do? In Atlanta, there are wheel alignment centers. <laughs> They'll align your wheels like that. First of all, it is not at all in the context of how the popular books have talked about it. I think this question is coming from the prana video, all right? It is not the way you think. The human energy system, you are looking at it like how you are looking at physical or physiological aspects of who you are. Okay, my kidneys are here, my heart is here, my brain, I don't know. So can I become intelligent by moving my this chakra here? <laughs> no, no. Do one thing, uh, whoever you are, uh, Bangalore, very tech. You know, it's a technological question. Can I move my chakra here and become loving? Well, This is not that kind of technology. Yes, it is technology, but not that kind. You don't worry about the chakras. If you're a sensible human being, you will naturally be a loving human being. Get some sense into your head. Sense means this. Let me put sense and senselessness into a very fundamental perspective. If you sit here, the simple sense of life is, if you… you don't have to know any knowledge, you don't have to know scriptures in the world or teachings or nonsense, nothing. If you sit here, you know for you to be alive, you must be breathing. Even if you can avoid your breakfast, still you have to be breathing. Breathing means the internal part of your lungs are here, fearing COVID, the external part of your lung is the whole bubble of this atmosphere. If you can't see beyond that, at least this much you can see. Oh, my existence is not absolute. My existence is… In… Uh, in sixty years of life, a man is supposed to eat something like fourteen hundred tons of food, in case you are you have graduated over that, all right, fifteen hundred. I leave it to you. Are you carrying fourteen hundred tons of food right now in this body? Thank you <laughs> If you did, you would be a truck by now. <laughs> or a better or a cargo ship, actually. No, you are just carrying that many kilograms. What does this mean? It simply means, what you think is my body today is not so tomorrow. Material has changed, I'm saying. Yesterday's body is not fully there today. Something new has come in. What is today's body is not there tomorrow. Something new has come in. If you experientially understand, what you think is body, what you think is myself, thoughts which were not there in you yesterday could have come into you today. Oh, emotions which were not there in you yesterday could have come into you today. Yes or no? Body which was not there in you yesterday could have come into you today. When this is the case, from where the hell are you getting the sense of absoluteness about yourself, me? If you just understand this much, you will become sensible. Otherwise, you will sit here like a senseless lump. 
Yes, because you think you're absolute me. Just if you relax this, it doesn't need any spiritual teaching, no scripture reading, no looking at heaven, no nothing. Simply little bit of sense. Naturally, everything that is naturally possible in the human being will rise up, including your love. Yes, your intelligence, your love, your expression, your articulation, your capabilities, everything will rise simply because you have come to sense. This is all you need. After that, beyond that you want to seek the ultimate nature because when sense comes, naturally that aspiration also will come. When that comes, then I must come in to guide you. Right now I am owing you from the basics, from the kindergarten, trying to tell you, see somebody got it, I am not the body. <laughs> Why do I have to tell you? If you had paid attention to the food that you're eating, and when you shit, you would know I'm not the body. Hello? Hello? That's all it takes. If you know that you eat yourself, when you say, I'm eating my food, in some way you're eating yourself, isn't it? Hello? So if food is yourself in some way, in your experience right now, the earth also should be yourself, isn't it? Because that's where the food came from. This doesn't need any enlightenment, just a little bit of sense. So if sense blossoms, becoming inclusive, becoming loving is a natural consequence. You don't have to move your chakras.